Um, and really the same question to get started to Susanna about um, what Fair Play Alliance set out to do. I guess you were founded after the, create, the adoption of the Freedom of Information Act, which was adopted in 2000, is that right? So you, there was already a potential tool there. Was that, did we, we, when you were, you were created, was the goal to use the Freedom of Information Act? Because you, you're former journalists um, mm -hmm. working in your organization. So tell us a bit about how that started, mm -hmm. please. I think we are partly victims of the time and uh, of the former professions. There are a couple of journalists in our office. Uh, so we took a lot of journalistic strategies to our work and uh, we realized that uh, in a country, uh, with a country in transition, you have a very high chance to influence how it will look like. So our long-term goal is to change the climate and the political culture in the country from uh, paternalistic, from... Um, uh, fr from hierarchical uh, to, a, to a partnership relationship to a citizen. And uh, because, because we know that, that governments are not open to big reforms and, and they don't welcome all your ideas uh, with, with warm, uh, open hands, uh, that's why we decided uh, to incorporate the journalistic part of experience to our work. And we disclose scandals that we find important uh, to create pressure on the government, and if one scandal is not enough, uh, then we, uh, we choose a field we concentrate on, like for example, political party finance, and we would try to do investigations and feed the public debate uh, with highlighting the problems in that field until the political climate is ready to accept the change. So, so this is the journalistic part of our work. Um, FOIA, uh, in our case, uh, was very important because I, I, I believe it gives you freedom as an investigator, as, as, as a journalist or as an NGO activist working in this field. You will very, um, uh, very shortly uh, notice that it gives you freedom. You don't have to rely on sources. Mm -hmm. You don't have to rely on documents they bring you. You can rely on your investi in investigation and independent analysis. Um, so that's why we decided uh, to have two streams of our work. One is to concentrate on concrete scandals, on concrete problems, and one is to just collect data preventively and incorporate it into one uh, web accessible database that is not only used by us, but by whoever wants to use it and it tracks information, uh, some of the oldest information there is from 1993 or 1995, and it's constantly updated. And just this uh, wealth of data allows you to, uh, when you don't have anything to do, uh, to, to, to decide to concentrate, like let's say, let's pick this political party, let's pick this ministry, let's pick uh, procurement, whatever you, you wish, and you just can, go through the records and analyze it, and, and you will find problems for sure. Although this database was in a sense revolutionary in, uh, in 2003 when we started, it's uh, used mainly by uh, NGOs, by investigative journalists, and by academic sphere. So, so people who are uh, trying to do research on European Union funding or uh, specific questions are using it. But the database is not highly popular. And this I have to thank to uh, Yerji, who opened, who opened our eyes and made us realize that, that, uh, that we were very happy with, with the database as it is, but we missed, we completely missed the Web 2.0 train and the developments that are happening in the society. And we, we have a database that is very valuable for specific groups, but it's not used by large amounts of population, so it's not so visible. And this is, this is where transparency becomes tricky and when, it, when uh, actually the OSI information program and Yerji and his team made us think um, why we are not making, uh, trying to make it a living database and a living data. And of course it's so specific that you can't expect people to play with it and to do analysis. So, um, so the, uh, the OSI information program hooked us up with, uh, with experts from the United States, from the well-known uh, Sunlight Foundation, to help us to discover what happened on the web and what, what we missed. And uh, we realized that people now are 
uh, very active, they are very educated, very individualistic, but they live virtually on the web. But you have to give them the data in a very um, simple and attractive form to be able to digest it. And um, the people who live in, in the virtual communities are very different. So you can't expect uh, from everybody to be an investigator. But what you can expect is that uh, you, th there will be a people who will be so-called evangelists, who will spread the world, word around, who will send the links, who will send uh, the, the interesting articles, or who will send uh, the visualizations. And there will be people who will just passively receive the information. So we decided that, uh, that, that we will go to a bar camp uh, in Bratislava. I don't, know, I, I don't know if you are familiar with, uh, with bar camps, but bar, bar camps are very informal uh, conferences started with IT people meant for exchange of, of know-how and information. And uh, we found out that uh, the, the IT community who has a special knowledge is so eager to work with data, is so eager to work in the transparency field, but they find NGOs very boring. They find that NGOs talk too long, that they have uh, these presentations that are not up to date and not modern. And, uh, and, and they, they want you to give them uh, the valuable information you have and let them do the work because they are much better. So, so uh, based on the success of the bar camp, we decided to organize a bar camp in our office garden where uh, 12 technologists came. And now we have a very vital group of people who are proposing uh, a complete redesign of our database. And the, the idea is that, that in a year's time, the database will be a spider web of information and every information in the database will, con will be connected uh, according to many factors. So you will be able to pull out any factor from the database and to uh, produce very interesting visualizations, like for example, uh, geographic visualizations or of which is the most popular county regarding European Union funding or uh, uh, any type of donations or subsidies or uh, political sponsorships. You will be able to find sponsors on a Google map and so on. So, um, so, so this is what we are excited about because we really have a feeling that, uh, that we were operating in the traditional scheme of an NGO uh, trying to hold the data and hide it and not share it with anyone because we were, uh, we were really afraid of misuse. And we made this very, uh, very heavy psychological and philosophical shift of sharing the data. So the data will be, uh, will be there as a spider web, but it will be also there in a machine readable form for the, t for the technologies to pick it up and to start playing it with themselves. Uh, so this is, uh, this is our goal in, in a year's time. And, um, and another, uh, an, another tool that we want to develop is that we uh, form the partnership with this uh, news portal, which is the most visited in the country. And we are going to copy a project of Google Labs. I don't know if you've seen the Google Labs, but it's a virtual laboratory for experimental applications, which uh, tells everybody that this is experimental field, so don't expect that these applications will be uh, totally great and that, that they will be totally finished, but you can, you can play with the applications and help us to find the, the mistakes and, and help us to uh, get them better. So we will have, we will have this investigative lab uh, with the cooperation of the, of the daily and it will be, uh, it will be organized uh, against, uh, around problems or scandals. So for example, you would have a public procurement scandal, uh, we would do a posting, the daily would start to feed, uh, feed the, the space, the experimental space with their blogs and their articles, and we would start to feed it with our FOIA data and with our, with our uh, visualizations. And the experimental lab will be completely open for people to play with the information and to come up with their own investigations. And this is a tactics um, that we already tried uh, quite successfully. We tried it on one of, one of our scandals where we posted information about uh, one public procurement, which was very large. European Union funding was involved. And, uh, and we, for example, decided to share the data for the first time. So every single bill, every single in invoice we've gotten, we, we put it up. And people started to play with it. They started to blog about it. And uh, they moved the article up to the top 10 and it was the most visited article for about five or six days in the public debate.